Yeah, Matthew chapter 6. And so we'll see what he want to say. And whatever he, as, as his mama said, whatever he say do, do it. So let's see what he want to talk to us about this morning. Let's see here. Y'all know prayer is like my, um, that's my heartbeat. Like on the for real, real. That's my love. It's prayer. Let's see. No, no, no. Um, so Matthew chapter 6 this morning, and let's look at um some things in there. Let me give me one second. Let me get this right here where I need it to be. So many, so much context is in um, the word of the Lord concerning things. Now, in um, in Matthew six here, let me see where I want to start because it's pretty much um, it begins starting out where he starts talking to them about the arms, you know, and he's um. I guess if I had to, you know, really just bring out something this morning as it relates to uh, good morning to those of you on Facebook this morning. Hold, hold, hold on one second. Let me let me clear out the glass for a minute. Let me just glare out here for a second. It looks like I got a little glare on it. Y'all got a glare this morning, so. Kind of get your glare out for a little bit. Okay. So if um I had to say this morning, you know, to talk to you, this is out of Matthew 6. It's a posture um, that's in prayer. A posture that comes with prayer. I really believe that we're in a time where it's time for the prayer warriors to literally take over. I do. I really believe we're in a place where it's time for the prayer warriors to take over. And I say that, um, I think always that prayer, prayer warriors should have always taken over. But I say that in context of there's nothing that God does in this earth except someone prays. It has to be thy kingdom come, which we're going to see in the scripture, thy will be done. So it has to be prayer. Prayer has to be. You cannot, it cannot be done without prayer it can literally be a thought in the mind of something that you want to do but what causes it to manifest in the earth is when the connection of heaven and earth takes place and how that connection take how that connection happens is is through prayer it's communication the father although he dwells within the earth he he comes in and visits in the earth his throne is in heaven his place where he dwell is in heaven because the bible tells us that that, that earth is his footstool so it is the place that is literally uh, for lack of a better word we would say beneath him his his throne is in heaven and so in order for the earth to exemplify or to uh, manifest the things that heaven has there has to be communication which is what we call prayer so prayer has to take place. I do believe that we're in a time where the prayer warriors should literally have control over things. People should be coming to prayer warriors, and I'll say prophets as well, but people should be coming to prayer warriors saying, you know, listen, can you pray with me concerning this? Can you uh, can you believe with me? Can you agree as touching? Because let me let me say that for a second. You know, we use the term uh, touching and agreeing. That's not what the Bible actually says. It says agree is touching is what it says. Uh, and so we have to watch the play on words and how we twist up things because it can literally change the whole meaning of what something is saying. And so it says agree is touching. 
so I believe that we should be in a place in life now where people are flocking and running to prayer warriors to say, can you please, um, uh, you know, agree with me concerning something? Can you believe and, and trust God with me concerning something? But you always, when you pray, you always have got to let it be known what it is that you want someone to come in agreement with. Let me, let me show y'all the wisdom in that. I want to, I want to explain to y'all again why I don't do unspoken prayer requests. I just don't do unspoken prayer requests. It's no offense to anybody. I know you've probably been taught, you know, uh, just, uh, stand up and say, I have an unspoken prayer request. Well, listen, I, I need to know what it is that I'm believing with you uh, concerning. I don't want you to have me agreeing with you come and agree is touching with you concerning something that is not even part of the will of God, something that is not even right because you can't say that we don't think of things or desire things that is not right. I'm going I'm going I'm going to explain it to y'all to help you to understand today. Yes, we can. We can literally have desires that are not right. Uh because there's a scripture in the Bible that says there is a way which seemeth right unto a man. That's what it says. Uh, there is a way which seemeth. It seemeth. Uh, it seemeth. There is an eth at the end of the word seem which means continuously. You can get locked up. I can get locked up in a situation where I think that what I'm doing is the right thing. Yeah? And the Bible says that the end of that thing is death. It is not right. So therefore, I can literally get in my mind that what I want, what I want to do is the right thing and literally it's not the right thing. And so therefore, if it's not the right thing and I pull you into it with me. Now I got you agreeing as touching with me concerning something that's not even right. That's not even the will of God. That's why Delphine Pastor Lee does not do unspoken prayer requests. If you come to me and say I have an unspoken prayer request, I'm just going to leave you right there with it because I'm not going to connect myself to something that I am not aware of. You have to have a focus point. You can't ask somebody to agree as touching with you with something and you ain't told them for what they agreeing with. You can't do that. I, mean, I got an unspoken prayer request. Most of the time that stuff comes from pride. You know, it has an element of pride connected to it. That 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 is something that I don't want. I don't want to say in front of people that I need prayer about this. Well, listen, sweetheart, that's the time that you deal with your prayer partner. Uh-huh. That's the time that you deal with the person that you have a, an intimate relationship with that y'all pray together because you're not afraid to tell them what it is that you want them to agree is touching with you. And so that's when you keep that. You don't bring that out in a public, uh, in a public air, arena. You know, you don't, you don't come out with that in a public arena to say, I have an unspoken. You, you, you don't, you don't, you don't. Oh God, I, I, I can show y'all in the scripture. Did Jesus didn't deal with no unspoken prayer request? That man knew exactly what it was. Y'all better watch that. I got to tell you the truth. Uh, this the prayer line this morning, ain't it right? Right? Ain't this the prayer line? I got to tell you the truth about prayer. Prayer is my essence, man. Prayer is the very core of my being. Before I am anything, I am a praying woman. I love prayer, man. I love prayer. I'm telling you because it's communication. It is fellowship and commune with the Father. And there is no way that you could go in prayer and have genuine prayer and still leave the same way that you came. You could be mad as all get out about something. Furious in your heart and mind about something, but if you mess around and break through in a ramp of prayer where there is true fellowship with God, your whole mind will change, your whole thought pattern, your whole emotional ram will begin to change because there is no way that prayer will leave you the way you came. There is no way that you could connect into a God that is peaceable. There is no way that you connect into a God that is righteous. There is no way that you could connect 
into a God that is loving, a God that has all patience and long suffering and meekness and temperance, you know, there is no way that you could connect into that God and leave the way you came in Jesus' name. There is no way that it can be so. So when we are connected in right as we are supposed to be, there is no way that we could stay the same. There is no way that I could have sin on my mind and go into a righteous place of prayer and sin still stay on my mind. And there is no way that I can do it. Uh, 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 uh. There is not possible at all. There is no way that I could have my life governed uh, by prayer and be comfortable in what I'm doing. Uh, let me tell y'all something that happened to me, and this happened for real. Uh, my, my stuff be real. I have to tell you the truth about it. Uh, there is a particular young man that made his way to me, uh, and we've always had a good relationship with each other. A pretty, I mean, pretty good relationship. He loves me. I love him. Uh, well, he stepped to me one day. I was at my mom's, and he stepped to me, and he said, listen, um, let me say something to you. He said, you must be done quit praying for me. I said, what you mean? I must be quit praying for you. He said, because I've been sinning, boy. He said, I've been in some stuff. He said, you hear me? He said, I've been in some stuff. He said, I, I said, now wait, hold, hold up just a minute. The prayer warriors must be done stop doing what they supposed to do. He said, because it just done got too easy for me to do what it is that I've been doing. Literally, my heart was convinced convicted right at the moment that the young man said that. It was convicted and it brought me to a place of understanding that when prayer, y'all, 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 when prayer is done like it's supposed to do, well, prayer does something. Do you hear me? Prayer will literally pump the brakes on something that is going to the left when it should be going right. Y'all heard about them hounds of heaven, how they are hunt you down, baby. Them hounds of heaven, y'all Y'all know right now that some of us are living off of prayers uh, that somebody prayed that may not even still be uh, in this earth. I felt like crying. Some of us have grandmamas uh, that prayed for us that are no longer here, uh, but the Lord is yet honoring the prayers uh, uh, that came forth. Why? Because them hounds of heaven uh, done hunted you down, baby. Them hounds of heaven done found you uh, in that dark place. God help me. Uh, them hounds of heaven heaven done came and found you in that place, baby, where you was locked up in that place, where you was caught up in sin in that place, where it seems like there was no way out, but the hounds of heaven got in there and said, hey, hold on, I got Delphine sent. I know exactly where she is. I, I done located her. She's over there to the left, to the left. Everything she owns is in a box to the left. That's where she is. Go over there there and catch her right over there on John Street. She's right there in that house on John Street. The hounds of heaven came and sniffed me out. Why? Because somebody had prayed. Somebody had told God about me. Somebody had told God to look upon me. Somebody had done prayed and had me on their mind and took the time and prayed for Fiend. And I'm so glad they prayed. I'm trying to tell you prayer won't let you do certain things. There is no way that you could be in real prayer and still have a mind to do wrong when you understand. God help me please. I heard the Lord say how you gonna do right with a do wrong mind. God help me please. How you gonna do right with a do wrong mind. You got to understand what prayer does. Y'all got to understand the context of prayer. Prayer is the greatest entity uh, that there is in this world. Prayer, uh, who Lord, is the greatest thing. Uh, it is the most powerful thing uh, that could ever happen when you pray. Uh, and I ain't talking about the now I lay me down to sleep. Uh, I pray the Lord my soul to keep. Uh, I ain't talking about that. Uh, oh, that's good within itself. Uh, uh, but I'm talking about.
God when you pray. And when you pray the power of God, when you pray the divine will of God, Jesus, in Matthew chapter 6, began to deal with some things concerning prayer. He started straightening up their posture before he could even talk to them about prayer. He says, listen, you got to understand that when you come to me, you got to come to me righteous. There's a certain way you got to be when you talk to me. How many of y'all know that when you talk to God, it does something to you, makes you shift. You automatically know, I can't fool with that man like that. Uh-uh, I can't go before him like that because of the honor that is within your heart because of the reverence that has been placed inside of your heart concerning him. You know that he's a righteous God. And so when I come to talk to him, I've got to come to him with the spirit of truth. When I come to talk to him, I've got to come to him with the spirit of reverence. And when I talk to him, I've got to talk to him with a spirit of honor. That is the place my truth might be. Lord, I'm mad about this situation. I really don't like the way this situation is. But